Inventory reserves, also known as inventory allowances or write-downs, play a crucial role in the financial health of a business. They help account for the inevitable decrease in inventory value due to various factors, which can significantly impact a company's bottom line. Today, I want to dive into the common types of inventory reserves, their uses, and how to calculate them effectively. Whether you're a seasoned business owner or just starting out, understanding these concepts can help you manage your inventory and finances more effectively. Let's start with the first type, the obsolescence reserve. This reserve is established to account for inventory that has become outdated or obsolete due to changes in technology, market demand, or product design. Imagine you own a computer retail store. You've stocked up on the latest laptops, but as new models hit the market, those older models start losing their appeal. To avoid overstating your assets, you need to create an obsolescence reserve to reflect this decline in value. This way, you can ensure your financial statements accurately represent the worth of your inventory. Next up is the excess inventory reserve. This reserve is essential for businesses that find themselves with inventory levels exceeding anticipated demand. Let's say you run a clothing store and you ordered a massive shipment of seasonal items, but they didn't fly off the shelves as expected. You might need to establish an excess inventory reserve to account for those items that will likely require discounts or even liquidation. It's a way to prepare for the potential loss in value and ensure that your financials remain accurate. Now, let's talk about the shrinkage reserve. This reserve addresses losses due to theft, damage, displacement, or clerical errors. Picture a grocery store where perishable items are often handled. Spoilage can occur or items might be misplaced, leading to discrepancies between what's recorded and what's actually on the shelves. By creating a shrinkage reserve, you're acknowledging these potential losses and preparing for them financially. This proactive approach can help mitigate the impact of such losses on your overall financial health. Another critical type of reserve is the lower of cost or market reserve. This reserve comes into play when the market value of your inventory falls below its recorded cost. For instance, if you're a furniture manufacturer and have a line of wooden chairs that aren't selling well due to increased competition or changing consumer preferences, you may need to establish an LCM reserve. By evaluating the net realizable value of those chairs and comparing it to their cost, you can determine if a reserve is necessary to reflect the true value of your inventory. So, how do you identify when an inventory obsolescence reserve is needed? Let's walk through a detailed example. Suppose you produce electronic goods and have a stock of components that have been sitting around for over two years. You start to worry that these components might no longer be usable. The first step is to conduct an inventory inspection. Check the condition of the components and assess the current market demand. If you find that a portion of your inventory is indeed obsolete, it's time to calculate the obsolescence reserve. You can use methods like the percentage of sales or aging methods for this calculation. For instance, if you estimate that 5% of your sales will be lost due to obsolescence and your total annual sales revenue is $1 million, your obsolescence reserve would be $50,000. Alternatively, if you analyze the age of your inventory and determine that 10% of its value is likely to become obsolete, you would again arrive at a reserve of $50,000 based on a total inventory cost of $500,000. Once calculated, this reserve is recorded as a contra asset on your balance sheet, ensuring your financial statements reflect the current inventory value. Now, let's shift gears and discuss the excess inventory reserve. The process for identifying when this reserve is needed is similar. If you're a clothing producer with t-shirts that have been in stock for over six months and you suspect they've lost their value, you'll want to conduct a review of your inventory. Analyze market demand and assess the likelihood of selling those t-shirts within a reasonable time frame. If you conclude that you have excess inventory, it's time to calculate your reserve. Using the same percentage of sales or aging methods, you can estimate potential losses. If you think 5% of your sales will be lost due to excess inventory, and your total sales revenue is $1 million, your excess inventory reserve would again be $50,000. If you determine that 10% of your inventory value will become excess based on age, and your total inventory cost is $500,000, you arrive at the same reserve amount of $50,000. Recording this reserve helps you manage potential losses effectively. Next, let's explore the inventory shrinkage reserve. This reserve is particularly relevant for businesses that experience discrepancies between their actual and recorded inventory levels. Imagine you're in the electronics industry and after a year, you suspect shrinkage due to theft or damage. To determine if a shrinkage reserve is needed, review your inventory counts and look for any discrepancies. If you find that some inventory is missing or damaged, it's time to calculate your reserve. You can use a formula that takes into account the cost of goods sold, net sales, and average inventory. For instance, if your cost of goods sold is $500,000 net sales or $1 million and your average inventory level is $100,000, your inventory shrinkage reserve would be $25,000. This reserve, recorded as a contra asset, helps offset losses incurred due to shrinkage, ensuring your financial statements remain accurate. 
Finally, let's discuss the lower of cost or market inventory reserve to identify when this reserve is needed. Consider a business engaged in furniture production with an inventory of wooden chairs that have been in stock for over two years. If you suspect that the market value of these chairs has declined below their cost, it's time to conduct a review. Analyze market demand, pricing trends, and production costs to determine if an LCM reserve is necessary. To calculate the reserve, you need to determine the net realizable value of your inventory. If your inventory cost is $50,000 and the NRV is estimated at $40,000, your LCM inventory reserve would be $10,000. This reserve allows you to write down inventory to its lower market value, reflecting the true worth of your assets on the balance sheet. Now that we've covered the different types of inventory reserves and how to calculate them, let's discuss some best practices for identifying when these calculations should be made. First and foremost, conducting regular inventory counts is essential. By regularly counting your inventory, you can spot discrepancies and determine if reserves are necessary. This proactive approach can save you from financial headaches down the road. Next, keep a close eye on market trends. Understanding the dynamics of your industry can help you anticipate changes in demand. If you notice a decline in demand for your products, or if new items are emerging, it may be time to reassess your inventory reserves. Reviewing historical data is another valuable practice. By analyzing past inventory reserve needs, you can identify patterns that may indicate future requirements. Look at sales history, inventory levels, and shrinkage data to gain insights into your inventory management. Additionally, analyzing production and sales forecasts can help you adjust your inventory levels accordingly. If production exceeds sales forecast, consider calculating an excess inventory reserve. Conversely, if production falls short, you may need to establish an LCM reserve. Finally, don't hesitate to consult with accounting professionals. They can provide guidance on best practices and ensure that your inventory reserve calculations align with generally accepted accounting principles. Regularly reviewing and adjusting your reserves is crucial to keeping your financials accurate and reflective of your business's current state. In conclusion, understanding inventory reserves is vital for any business looking to maintain financial stability. By recognizing the different types of reserves, knowing when to create them, and accurately calculating their amounts, you can manage potential losses and present a realistic picture of your company's financial health. It may seem tedious, but the benefits of maintaining accurate inventory records and regularly reassessing your reserves far outweigh the effort. Implementing these practices will help you navigate the complexities of inventory management and ensure your business remains on solid financial ground. So, take the time to familiarize yourself with these concepts, and you'll be well equipped to manage your inventory effectively.